Kentucky recruiting is on a heater. About a week after flipping the Smith twins from Michigan, the Wildcats have done it again. They landed another Smith. This time it's Devin Smith, who has no relationship to Jared or Jacob Smith, but they are cornering the market on the Smiths. So we're going to talk about Kentucky's newest commitment, linebacker Devin Smith from Brunswick, Georgia. But first, Kentucky fans, hit that subscribe button to the On3 Recruits page. This channel is exploding, and we love talking Kentucky recruiting, so hit that subscribe page. All right, let's bring on Nick Roush from KSR to break this one down. Nick, how is Kentucky able to do it, pulling yet another Smith, this time from Georgia? Now, LSU was heavily involved, so what did Stoops and his staff do to win this recruitment? Chris Collins just has a thing for Smiths, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I love the Smith breakdown because – uh, right now it does feel that way, but this was a big get. And, and I think it, a lot of it comes down to timing. There was a lot of big fish in this recruitment, not just LSU, but some other heavy hitters in the SEC uh, as well. And Chris Collins, you know, he's like, let's, let's go ahead and make this happen. Him and Mike Stoops, they pushed their chips in. They got Devin Smith in for an official visit to kick off the season. And part of what they did is they pitched, listen, you're the prototype for successful players. The guy who leads the SEC in sacks right now, he's a guy from South Georgia that has some incredible athletic traits that played a lot at outside linebacker, and they taught him how to be an inside linebacker. And I think that's the similar trajectory they're going to take here. Kentucky now has four guys in Georgia. Chris Collins has done some serious work and deserves a tip of the cap for his efforts in this 2024 class. Absolutely. A big pickup out of the state of Georgia. Now, you said you see Devin Smith kind of filling in in the middle linebacker position. What do you see in terms of his path to playing time? Is he somebody that Kentucky fans should expect to see as a freshman? Is he going to need a year or two to develop? How do you see it playing out? Well, he's one of those guys that is a little bit on like he, he he's shed, he shredded. He's a big, strong guy, but he could still probably add some weight to his frame, and I think that's mm -hmm. what makes him intriguing. Kentucky's gone heavy on traits of these kind of long, lengthy athletes with big frames that you can play in multiple positions. Now, the, as much as Liam Cohen gets hyped up for being multiple and versatile offensively, Brad White's the same, too, on defense, where it takes these guys a little bit to kind of let the cake bake and figure it out. So while I do think he has the athletic tools that are there, uh, this one feels like a put in 10, 15 more pounds of muscle, figure out what's going on, and then he'll be off and running uh, about a year into his time in Lexington. Yeah, I agree. The athleticism's there, and he has the frame to put on more size. So how many linebackers is Kentucky looking to sign in this cycle? Are they done now? What's wild is that it's if you look at On3's team recruiting page, it's so difficult to figure out because there's – Kentucky really has just gotten a ton of guys that are like fringe edge, fringe linebacker. I think they are done on the inside, but on the edge – there's a big guy who told Chad Simmons he's ready to decide in the next week. Picks are coming in, and I've logged an on-three RPM prediction for Brian Robinson to land at Kentucky. The four-star edge is he's, – he's what Kentucky wants in a jack, an edge-setting run stopper at the edge of that 3-4 defense, and he could be a huge, huge addition uh, for that front seven, which – as much hype as Liam Cohen's getting and this, this new look offense and you got Cutter Bowley to build a class around, yeah. it might be the best front seven class that Mark Stoops has ever pulled in at Kentucky with a lot of talented guys at linebacker on the edge of that defense. Look at that, Nick. We're here talking about Kentucky's newest commitment and you're already laying inside intel on their next commitment. Oh, man. We're looking, we're looking ahead. We're ready to rock and roll. And that's what you get here on the inside scoop. You just get scoop. Yeah, and Smiths. A lot of those. Lots of Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> so Kentucky now has 20 commitments with Devin Smith now on board. You mentioned that, you know, they're going to add likely another defensive lineman or linebacker here shortly. What does Kentucky need to do to finish this class and feel really good about where they sit in 2024? For a while, I thought it might be another running back, but you, the success of Ray Davis and then Demi Sumo Karmbe is kind of a second guy. I don't think they're going to need to reach for a second high school back in this class. So really, I, th I think a lot of it just comes down to best available at the skill positions, both 
on offense and defense, and whether that's uh, safety, uh, cornerback, but I think most likely it's in the form of wide receiver. Harley Gildmore certainly fits that mold, a top 300 prospect from Pahokee, Florida. He can be that that outside, also deep threat that can do a little bit of both. I, I think he's really talented and will end up having a late rise in the rankings uh, as a kid who reclassified over the summer. But you can always – you can never have too many really good wide receivers, never too many good cornerbacks. So I think they're really going to be looking at best available, what they can do on the field to draw more eyeballs to get some of those yeah. big names on campus. Uh, there's usually one or two that we don't know about. I, I mentioned Trevin Wallace early on. They didn't know. He was going to Auburn until signing day. And then Gus Malzahn gets fired, and Kentucky's right there waiting, and they get a top 100 prospect. Uh, to sign in February. So there's always a couple guys we don't know about until late, and I have a feeling that's going to be the case here with the final two or three or four spots for Kentucky's 2024 recruiting class. Yeah, hey, look, Kentucky is positioning themselves for a strong finish. They don't really have any major needs, just going for that best available player. And today we're here to talk about the commitment of Devin Smith. Nick Roush from KSR, thank you for breaking it down. Make sure you tune in next week the same time. We'll see if Kentucky lands yet another Smith. No, I'm just joking about that. But <laughs> Nick, thanks for dropping by the Inside Scoop. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.